Today is July 1st, 2012, and this is my layout as, as to its progress for the outdoor exp expansion. Uh, this is the first loop uh, that's uh, somewhat complete, but still not really complete. <clears throat> and it'll have two loops. It'll go around this lower part of the garden here, and eventually it'll work up to the slope uh, with the second loop into the upper level of the yard here, which is bounded by um, a couple of tiers of three or four tiers of Versalock blocks. <clears throat> it's about 22 feet deep from the blocks to the back fence there. And the overall length is about 58 feet, including the lower section of the, of the garden here where the loop is at. <clears throat> I've used temporary uh, uh, bricks to hold up the track a bed at the uh, roughly the elevation I wanted um, and as a temporary basis and then I put these 4x4 four four posts in like a small letter H, uh, a shorter post on the in, inside of the loop and a taller one on the outside. The taller posts will will basically be able to allow the second loop of track to come around and go roughly near the top of these posts here so I can get up to the upper portion of the of the yard here. This is a test train uh, originating from under my house that's going to go outdoors in a, a few moments. It has four GP40s on the front and 25 cars. The last test train had uh, uh, SD45s on it. I think I had three of them on it. Uh, and like the SD45s, these logos are equipped with Datum Precision uh, custom machine stainless steel wheels that work quite well on my layout here. And they also work outdoors. <laughs> Flanges are about 80 thousandths deep. The train's going to leave the portal from under the house here. And traverse the drop in LGB bridge. And I'll have to speed it up here to start the grade to ascend the grades. It's 25 cars long. Uh, many of the cars are the heavier USA Trains cars. In this case, they happen to be on the rear of the train now. Uh, these are the tank cars that are made out of uh, aluminum, weighing five and a half pounds each, except for the shorty 42-foot one there. It's a little bit less weight. And of course, the, uh, the grain cars, they're pretty heavy too. That far distance part of the loop is the steepest, it's about roughly 3% grade, and then it's relaxed to 1-2% to as I come around this section here. Now the train's going to cross over itself, much like the Tehachapi Loop, near Bakersfield, California. That's as far as I kind of temporarily laid the track here. Now I'm backing the train down the loop and I'm taking the video from inside the loop now. And 
again the train will have to traverse up to the upper part of the yard here eventually. So far I've installed what I'm pointing to here with the antenna of the uh, train engineer is, is part of the roadbed made from salvage deck boards from my uh, previous deck that was basically eaten by termites and I salvaged about one third of the boards that were somewhat usable so they came in handy to, to build the railroad here. So. Uh, this is the decking board and decking board. I haven't screwed the tracks down yet, but they're just sitting on top of these boards. So formerly were held up by these temporary bricks here. I'll run the train out once more. And I'm taking the video from the inside of the loop now. Make a run for the hill. <coughs> Here the train's going to cross over itself again. And the part of the video you see here has to be formalized and completed yet with this temporary tracks temporarily held up. 